What's up guys? Derek, moreplaysmoredates.com and we are indeed back on the YouTube. This is uh, a, the longest hiatus I have ever had from the platform bar none and uh, well fuck, I don't even know if I've had one to be honest. And there's been tons of messages, tons of threads on the subreddit, tons of comments, DMs, private messages, emails, etc. Asking what's going on, when I'm coming back, etc. And um, yeah, so we're back. <laughs> We're back, dude. And um, what have I been doing? You know, most people are gonna wanna get like, just, instead of just jumping into videos, like personal update, if you wanted to uh, hear what the fuck I've been up to. So basically what happened was in November, um, I was sort of planning a trip because I knew I had multiple stops on, uh, like first it was a business trip, mainly for Gorilla Mind HQ. Um, it's not based in Canada. It's actually in Idaho, which is you know one of the first stops on my trip. It ended up being the second stop because I had a stop in Texas before that. And I was also going to Vegas for Merrick Health stuff. We were doing a um, this conference called A4M. It's like a anti-aging, vitality, health, preventative medicine kind of clinic. It's not a clinic. It's more like it's a conference where there's a lot of different uh, speakers that are kind of talking about their niche or cutting edge literature that's come out on different subtopics relevant to what we do for a living. And, um, you know, obviously stuff I'm highly interested to just from a self-education perspective. And there are little like expo things as a part of AFRAM that have, you know, different compounding pharmacies attending, different individuals that are, you know, promoting different services relevant to the industry, et cetera. So those were the two kind of main destinations at first but it sort of evolved into like this multi-stop trip with uh more than just um like yes it's still business related ultimately but um as many of you probably saw i um, went on the joe rogan podcast at the start of december which was an awesome experience joe is exactly as you see on the podcast in real life like we hashed it up for about 30 minutes before the podcast and it was uh it went really well i feel like and i'm looking forward to doing it again at some point in the future um, so that went well. And then basically right from there, I was uh, like gung ho fucking heading over to Sugarland, Texas to go visit James English and Sush. They are Gorilla Mind athletes that are friends of mine. And I've been talking to them a while. Uh, for a while, I had said if I was ever in Texas, you know, I'll swing by. So Austin apparently is like a three hour drive roughly from where they are. Or I don't remember what it was off the top of my head, but it was a couple hours at least. Um, but we coordinated coordinated it so that my departure flight going to Idaho for the Gorilla Mind stuff would leave from the airport closest to their place. And then I could squeeze in a podcast at their place. And if you haven't seen that one, it's on uh, Mogcast is the channel for their podcast. And basically, so basically I was in Austin, Texas, did the Joe Rogan podcast right from there, packed my shit up, got picked up by Sush, got driven over to their place to do the podcast uh, for Mogcast. And then from there, basically, James <laughs> hauled me over to the airport almost was late for the flight, but I didn't like it's it sucked to be on this time crunch because there was so much more stuff we could have got into on that podcast and we probably will in the future. At least I hope so. But um, basically just made my flight and it was funny because when I was walking through the airport. Um, I'm still in Texas at this point. And this was the day after the Joe Rogan podcast. So I could see people like the episode came out at maybe like noon i believe of the day i did the modcast podcast so like i hadn't even watched it and there were people watching it while i was like in transit doing all this stuff so i did their podcast and basically hauled ass over the airport went through the airport and while i was going through the airport i could like visually see like people looking at me while they were and i would like like notice it on their phones too if i like looked down to see what they were watching and a few people you know yelled out at me and you know asked to you know talk and stuff and that was cool so and then i got over to idaho where um basically did a bunch of gorilla mind stuff as far as uh you know planning for the future um corporate stuff accounting just a bunch of different stuff as well as I also had to order a bunch of podcast shit because um, Dan Bilzerian asked if I wanted to collaborate and do a podcast. So I was like, obviously took him up on it, bought a bunch of podcast shit because I don't have any podcast stuff. It's just me. Like, I guess people <laughs> who do podcasts with them traditionally have like a giant team, a giant uh, staff of people who like carry the equipment, have the equipment, high quality cameras, high quality mics, etc. But instead, it's just me hauling this shit around in a suitcase. And I actually didn't even have most of the stuff. I was shipping it to Idaho. I was gonna bring it with me to Vegas. 
um, to bring to his place. So I shipped like, you know, I got these like new camcorders literally just for that, as well as a bunch of other stuff. And um, yeah, the Idaho trip was good. It's been a while since I was at HQ. Uh, it was good to meet the uh, expanded team because it is, you know, a very quickly growing company and there are a lot of new faces every time I go visit. And as well as just to see kind of the, I don't know, the fruits of your labor sort of thing. In real life, it's a bit different because a lot of my stuff, again, I'm working essentially remotely from Canada, but the actual like physical stuff and people and everything is in Idaho. So for me, I make relatively infrequent trips, you know, given the, you know, travel restrictions in the past couple of years, I'd like to make that more frequent, but like, we'll see what goes on in the future. But um, like every time I go there, shit's like un nearly unrecognizable with how much it's progressed. So it's really cool to see it. Uh, like I know what's going on, but I don't like visually see the buildings until I'm like fucking there, you know? So seeing the new land that we're getting, seeing the new, you know, plots that we're building uh, warehouses on, seeing the new warehouses we have in general, you know, the new faces, meeting everyone. Um, it's always cool to do. And it was good to uh, make it out there. And then at the same time, it was like testing out my podcast equipment to make sure I even knew how to fucking use it. Cause I, my most nervous thing the entire trip was worrying that in the middle of the podcast, my shit would just like not work, right? Have some sort of technical glitch, which fortunately I didn't, which we're going to get into the actual Vegas part of the trip shortly. But I did actually have a minor technical hiccup. Well, it wasn't minor. It actually could have ruined the whole thing, which we'll get into shortly. So anyways, get on a flight to Vegas, go over there. Basically it's checking into the hotel, um, getting my stuff unloaded you know, eating dinner and like going to bed pretty much to prepare and get a good enough night's sleep. So um, I was like perpetually underslept essentially the old trip, but that was more for my, <laughs> it was less, of, it was more like my poor forecasting slash planning rather than the fact that I was like that inundated. I probably could have made the night sleep definitely milked a bit more out of them than I did. So, and for short, I'm going to do a video on the cognitive stacks that I utilize for the Joe Rogan podcast, as well as for the Dan Bilzerian podcast, because... Quick note from one of the new sponsors of the channel. This is Athletic Green. So this is um, one of many companies that reached out to me during my hiatus, like you've seen in some of my other integrations. I don't really work with a lot of companies and it's because most of the stuff, they're trying to capitalize off of you know the audience or the reach of the individual. And unfortunately, most influencers are unethical as hell and just like promote whatever, whether it's NFTs that they know are literally stealing money from their following or I don't know some mobile game that they literally will never play in their life um, That's the kind of stuff I reject on a regular basis um, But products that actually have like real literature to support their efficacy or stuff that I use myself or would otherwise spend my money on No-brainer stuff to kind of integrate into the channel when they're worth when they're uh, wanting to collaborate with me so for me again my kind of uh, reason for integrating this into my daily routine right now is I have never had a high quality green supplement supplement to be honest this is something that I haven't really sat down and formulated myself personally and to be honest even when I have greens in my diet which is something I try to do on a regular basis usually I end up pigeonholing myself into too much of one thing and then I end up just like you know force feeding it down in one of my you know five meals a day and then calling it quits rather than being more balanced, taking a more balanced approach and making sure I'm hitting like a broad spectrum of uh, antioxidant support or other things that could otherwise be hormetic stressors that otherwise improve my immune function in general, um, support a better overall, you know, healthy infrastructure essentially for overall systemic benefits and whatnot. So for me, having something like this, it's something I heard about a few, a few different people that I respect in the industry were promoting already on their channels. So, you know, I dug into it a bit further. I had been reached out to a couple times by some companies that were uh, working on behalf of Athletic Greens. And I thought, okay, you know, I might as well give it a try. Like at this point, I kind of defer out to individuals I respect and can otherwise educate myself from when it comes to areas of interest that I feel I am lackluster in my um, knowledge basis on. And when they recommend something and they've used it for years on end, you know, I'm willing to give it a shot and otherwise put, integrate it into my life and see if it's an otherwise uh, a staple. So for me, obviously the first thing being 
Does it taste tolerable? And it actually tastes good. This is something that I can actually uh, enjoy while I'm sipping. It doesn't taste too much like dirt or something. Like when I was getting just a super loaded greens product, you would expect like, oh, it's gonna be like licking goddamn dirt, but no, it's actually pretty good. So the product itself is called AG1 by Athletic Greens, and I've been taking it on a daily basis now. All I do is I mix one scoop of this in eight to 12 ounces of water. For me, 12 ounces is my go-to. You know, everyone has their own desired um, concentration of flavor, just like with pre-workout, just like with anything. And um, I have this in the morning on an empty stomach before I have my first meal of the day. And for me, you know, it kind of checks a lot of boxes that I otherwise am a bit ambiguous on if I was otherwise crossing on certain days when I'd be, you know, deficient in certain um, veggies that sometimes I'm on it and sometimes I'm less on it when it comes to a consistent diet model that features a broad spectrum spectrum um, like greens profile that's spread out evenly over my meals um, that's an area that I could otherwise improve on and for me this is something that otherwise you know gives me that peace of mind that I'm checking that box so as far as the benefits that you can um, expect from this basically for me you know what I saw from this as useful and they otherwise show as attributes on their website it supports energy focus gut health digestion immune system without the need to take multiple products or pills um, has energy supporting ingredients like natural B12, not synthetic, um, biotin, bioavailable folate. So rather than your folic acid crap that you would otherwise get in a lot of multivitamins, this is something that otherwise features, um, like it actually follows cutting edge literature on stuff when it comes to nutritional information rather than just slamming you with synthetics that might otherwise be counterproductive for your health. Like for example, 5-MTHF rather than folic acid. If you look into some of the MTHFR polymorphism literature, you can see why this is such a no-brainer to be doing in your uh, nutritional supplementation and whatnot. Also has 7.6 billion um, CFUs of dairy-free probiotics, which is great, has magnesium as well. And the digestion supporting ingredients, you know, my main interest personally, the spirulina, the slippery elm, papaya, burdock root, and immune system supporting ingredients like their zinc, ashwagandha, and mushroom complex. And it's gone over 52 iterations over the last decade. This is a very long standing brand. Um, I've heard of AG1 by Athletic Greens uh, multiple times over the years, but for me, you know, like I need to hear kind of get the, a nudge from multiple credible sources before I kind of really jump headfirst into something um, that I'm going to potentially integrate into my everyday life. So for me, it was uh, something that I kind of, uh, I don't know, tiptoed my way into and it seems to be something that will become a staple in my routine for the foreseeable future. And another thing I was pleased to see as a fringe benefit is their inclusion of their liquid K2 D3 supplement. So this is something I already take every single day in soft gel format. I've already spent, I've literally been using this supplement for like years. Like even if you go to my oldest articles on what I use as a, my supplement stack every day for health support, um, that was something that was always a staple in my regimen. And I always highly recommend individuals. Almost everyone can benefit from D3 and K2. It's a very deficient um, part of diet models in almost all cases for K2. And then from D3, most people frankly are deficient, not getting out of their house enough, not getting exposed to sunlight enough. And um, especially in the current climate of things, having adequate D3 is shown to be very, very important. So this K2 and D3 supplement I was pleased to see is segmented into um, K2 as MK4 and MK7. So there is a difference in not necessarily like pharmacokinetic because it's not a drug, but the way the half-life sort of how long it lasts in your body between K4, MK4 and MK7. And it seems to be that uh, you get a more broad spectrum support by having MK7 in there as well. And most sort of like the folic acid thing, if you have a company that's otherwise just including general K2 and is not actually going out of their way to mention the addition of MK7, it's pretty likely that they are not doing their due diligence and it's a lackluster product. So for me, it was great to see that. It has 600 servings and you actually get a free year supply of it when you sign up via athleticgreens.com slash more place more dates is the link it's gonna be in the description below if you want to check it out and you also get five free travel packs to try out yourself separately for on the go um, or to give to your friends and family or whatever when you get um, when you sign up for me it kind of just gives a bit of peace of mind when i'm using this stuff and um, it tastes good enough that you would otherwise be able to use it on a daily basis which was again a big concern when you're using something with natural flavors that literally is concentrated like what you may otherwise expect to be licking the ground but it does not <laughs> taste like that fortunately so this is a new brand integrating on the channel sticking their neck out to uh see how 
uh, much my you know audience aligns with the stuff I'm interested in. So you can check it out if you're interested. It helps support me. Obviously, when you guys use uh, the links for um, brands that feature themselves on the channel and whatnot. So very much appreciate if you guys try them out. And I would definitely highly recommend you give it a shot and see if it's something that you would otherwise have on your daily schedule, just like I am. So anyways, you can check that out, link in description below and back to our regularly scheduled programming. Um, I think those are interesting subtopics as far as like what kind of stuff. A lot of people have really recognized my ability to articulate um, and elaborate on certain things and deep dive into uh, literature and remember random factoids and shit. Um, relative to my first days of filming where I sound like a goddamn zombie. I was just like a lifeless human, basically emotionless, monotone, fucking terrible at talking essentially, <laughs> which is ironic because back in the day through like massive exposure therapy, through all the, you know, the cold approach stuff and whatnot, I was actually like very good at talking in random scenarios with random people. But then when you put a camera in front of you, it's like a totally different thing. So getting comfortable in front of a camera versus getting comfortable in front of random people, Two totally separate things entirely. So getting good at being on camera was like, you know, just reps on reps on reps of video, years and years of videos. And um, if you just like sort my thing by oldest on like my upload section, you can actually see pretty dramatic before and after if you compare my most recent videos to the oldest ones in terms of just a level of energy, I don't know, enthusiasm, confidence of what I'm speaking about, etc. So. Anyways, make it over to Vegas and um, the day after I arrive, go over to Dan's place, set up all the podcast shit. Um, I'm just like crossing my fingers that the shit is going to work properly. <laughs> I'm gonna have no technical hiccups. And there was like, I have this soundboard. It's like a Scarlet i8 uh, soundboard thing. And the gain on it, if you guys, I fucked up my gain many times on this channel, unfortunately, like Andrew Huberman podcast I did. Um, my gain on my mic was set a bit too high and it pretty substantially fucked up the audio on my side of the podcast, which really sucked because when you have like very, very high tier guests, um, once in, you know, once, I don't know, like one off opportunities with big tier guests. Cause again, it's not like you're just going to tell them, Oh, like the audio was shitty. Let's redo the whole thing. That's never going to happen. So, and even if you did, you know, it's never going to be the same as what it was the first time on the exact same topics or whatever. So anyways, the gain on my mic, I've screwed up a few times in the past. It's been like a bit too high and it's made really, really loud, fucking vibrating, not good audio that, you know, I wasn't happy with. So, but this Scarlet i8, it's so sensitive that your gain, if it's even like a little bit it's, it's really fucking hard to explain because it's like, frankly, I'm not a goddamn sound engineer. So this is probably why guys have teams that come with them that do this stuff, but trying to like dial it in perfectly and like kind of gauge and anticipate how far away we're both going to be talking from the mics when we're talking. It's kind of like, ah, I don't know, like I've never set up a podcast myself. I've done the whole like the webcam thing with this for like podcasts on like in my office here, but I've never done like a physical, like going, actually I did it at Chris's place in Idaho a long time ago, but again, the equipment back then was like way shittier, but it like, I don't know, it was like more user-friendly. I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, but anyways, making sure the these new camcorders were, you know, synced properly, um, everything was working properly, the soundboard was working. I had like, uh, you know, this big extension cord thing that plugged everything in and would reach across this like giant poker table that Dan has. And just like, like even at the start of the podcast, you see me walking around. It's me like triple checking that the cameras were working and like making sure the sound is all like functioning correctly. And it's funny because I ended up fucking up my mic. <laughs> so him, the amount of distance he has from his mic was like fine, perfect. It sounded great. Mine was the one that was fucked up because I move around a lot when I talk. I'm very like, uh, I don't know, like for, like for me, when I talk on phones, for example, I kind of Talk, I talk and walk a lot of the times and on podcasts, like I will, I don't know, I'm very like animated, I guess. I move my hands and shit. I move my head around. I don't stay like locked in one spot. Uh, I was like Joe Rogan. I was very shocked and impressed how stable this guy is able to stay during the whole podcast. Like his arms were on the table and he was just dialed in the whole fucking three hours the entire time in like the exact same spot, like not shifting and all, not getting... Like, it's not like you get out of frame and obviously Jamie would fix it if you were, but I mean, not like shifting in your seat, not doing anything weird, not doing anything that's sort of, I don't know. For me, I'm just a bit more moving when I talk. That's just how I am. So 
my mic ended up having some like peaking issues from like the not gauging the gain properly, whereby I had to spend like two days manually fixing the audio when I got home, which was <laughs> really annoying, but definitely worth it because if I didn't, the podcast quality would have been destroyed. And fortunately, I was able to manually alter it enough that it was like nearly imperceivable unless people are, you know, like experienced with this shit. But like the average person would not even like really notice or care that much, which is, I was very, very fortunate in that because I thought I fucked it up. Because like, with the Huberman one, I was only able to improve it so much, but it still sounded sounded really, really aggressively peaking in a lot of instances. And I was like, fuck, dude, for this Bilzerian one for like three plus hours, I'm peaking. And this is going to be rough if people have to, you know, endure this and um, I'm not able to fix it, you know, substantially enough to be like satisfactory or just like, like barely, you know, fucking acceptable. But luckily it got to a point where it was like pretty, pretty, pretty good. So I was happy about that. And the rest of the Vegas trip was solid. Got to meet up with uh, Merrick staff. A lot of the same um, sentiments echo with what I said about Gorilla Mind, you know, meeting it's a lot of new faces, quickly expanding company, um, getting to interact and, you know, do uh, team building stuff in person, uh, map out, you know, objectives and, you know, company strategy and stuff like that in person, obviously highly, I don't know, just like far more productive. And it's just like way better to, you know, develop high level, I don't know, like relationships with everyone in the company and the whole team and just kind of like... Uh, um, get way more shit done way more quick when you're all like physically in a room together rather than, you know, setting up a conference on Zoom and like making sure everyone's available. And then, you know, people are lagging on Zoom. So it's like, you know, the audios are like off, off time by a few seconds that people have to interject like over each other. It's just like way better in person, obviously. So it was like a highly productive trip. Um, and I got to do some fun shit while I was there too. Like obviously meeting the Merrick staff and we did some fun stuff as a team. Uh, I also went out to uh, a club while I was there. Went to a couple of restaurants, went to see uh, Copperfield, the magic show, did some fun shit, uh, me and my girl, as well as uh, my business partner, his wife, and um, uh, some of the Merrick staff too. We did some, you know, random side kind of like, I don't know, fun little, you know, while you're in Vegas kind of stuff that was as a tangent to the already planned like team building exercises and like, you know, meetings and stuff like that. So it's definitely a good time overall. When I got back, I was like burnt out, even though it was not, it's not like it was uh, that intensive relative to normally, to be honest, like the two a day video schedule, the staying on top of like fucking everything from the companies on top of the videos, on top of other stuff is a bit more demanding, but it was, I don't know. It was just the amount of under how underslept I was, as well as the previous like years of continuous work. It sort of built up to a point where I was like, you know what? let's take a break for the first fucking time ever. Like Christmas is coming soon. Um, this would be a nice time to just take some time off and just chill. So when I got back, I literally did nothing for a few days. Me and my girl just like hung out, got sushi, you know, watched movies, um, hot tubs, etc. It was just a really good time. And then after that, I sort of like slowly got back into work. Did, and I, I didn't realize how much backlogged like accounting and corporate structure stuff I had. So for me, and again, emails, so many fucking emails, dude, that I just left for months because when you're doing this much content, some stuff falls by the wayside. And unfortunately for me, getting an assistant who can like filter through some of the emails I deal with is not that easy because a lot of the stuff is like, for example, content ideas, trying to identify what a good content idea as if you're not literally me, is kind of difficult, you know, like seeing a random scientific study, like how do you identify if this is like high quality content or interesting or relevant or fucking anything, dude. So having an assistant who's going to like go through all that stuff hasn't been something, you know, we've been, I've been able to find at this point. So for me, I've just had a backlog of so many emails that I wanted to get to ground zero on the emails before I get back to videos. And to be honest, while I'm filming this, I'm, st I'm still not there, but I'm working on it. And I was just chipping away at those emails as well as doing a bunch of meetings with accountants and a bunch of stuff that has to do with uh, more boring, you know, I don't know, maybe it's not boring. Maybe I should do some like corporate videos, you know, business stuff, because some of you guys might find it interesting. And yeah, like obviously some of you guys that have been with my channel since the beginning, you know, you've seen kind of the progression as I go, and maybe your interests align with mine where you want to hear some of the stuff about, you know, like tax planning, corporate structure, how a Canadian, you know, operates in the US. Bunch of shit, a bunch of shit, <laughs> bunch of shit 
like that, that uh, started to, you know, eat up the days quite a bit. And I was like, damn, like this is a lot of stuff I had left on my plate um, that kind of like fell by the wayside while I was doing the videos hardcore full time. So that's kind of ate up the entire schedule to date, to be honest. I've been a uh, little bit kind of like chipping away at that stuff, not going like full board on it like I probably should be. But other than that, um, yeah, you know, this is me transitioning back into the content and I'm uh, happy to be back. Also happy to see that the channel has been doing like reasonably okay since I left because, you know, you never know when you stop posting on YouTube, there's definitely a bit of a little bit of an anxiety about, oh, like the snowball of the algorithm is no longer going to favor me because I've just, you know, stopped posting. And for me, fortunately, it wasn't that bad. So I was just fortunate my audience like really fucks with my stuff. And, um, you know, people, I guess, really liked the the stuff I've been doing recently or some of the other old videos sort of got propped up while I was gone a little bit, maybe. But um, either way, glad to be back. I have a lot of topics that I did not touch on that I were high, highly requested. It was it was hard to like I convinced myself I was not going to film for a certain amount of time. It was more so for December, like January is the one that kind of like spiraled into this whole, you know, accounting stuff that really started consuming time. I didn't even know was going to happen. But like a lot of the topics like, you know, the Jeff Bezos DiCaprio scenario and him getting fucking sauce out of his mind. Um, I, I, the swimmer who broke records, the trans athlete, uh, like there's so many topics that have been like backlogged that people really wanted me to touch on that um, fell by the wayside a bit. And I had to kind of like check myself to not do them because I really wanted to just pull out the camera and go for it. But I needed to get a mental break and then be able to come back strong because I don't want to like half ass either scenario, you know, like the emails getting done, the corporate stuff versus like the videos. It's kind of hard to do both at the same time. So anyways, that's kind of where we're at. Um, a lot of topics to cover, a lot of stuff to get back into, and it's good to be back. So anyways, missed you guys. And uh, thank you for everyone who reached out with concern while I was gone too. It was uh, cool to see how many people like really, really missed the, uh, you know, daily upload schedule. I don't know if it's going to be daily right now, um, because again, I'm still a little bit chipping away at the old stuff, but we shall see. We shall see. I'm going to be, uh, either way back relatively consistently and hopefully soon more consistently. So anyways, thank you guys for, uh, sticking around and hopefully you enjoyed some of the stuff that came out while I was gone, uh, or some of my old content you might've dug into, but either way we're fucking back and I will talk to you guys soon.